Yeah, this is Neil here. I have joined here. Can you hear me on? Yes, 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 Mr. Basu. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, yes. so uh, yeah. Professor Upadha has also joined. I see. Okay. Good afternoon, Professor Don. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine, sir. How are you? Okay. So all the best. And I, I, I hope that it will be an interesting one. And all we can learn a lot. And other uh, soon I, I have sent this uh, information to all uh, institutes all over the India. So that most more people will join. I think uh, they can join, and they might, they might, they can also see the uh, live uh, proceedings also. And this is an interesting topic. In, uh, supply chain. The supply chain is very vital to run a business. So this is very, in, in this will be very interesting. I welcome to all professors, to all students, and also the students from the. Outside, they are joining. They will be joining very soon. I welcome Professor Padijat, Dr. Padijat, in this event. And I want his or the Industry Persons Association to make this uh, CBS to and to uh, transform this CBS into a new height. Uh, Madam, uh, Madam Ghosh. Yes. So we are uh, right now at five. So yes. I think we should start. Uh, okay. Let others join, and anyway, it is a it would be a live uh, streamed live. So many of you can uh, see. Okay, I'll just request participants to open their videos, please. Once. Requesting all participants to open their videos, please. Good evening, a very warm welcome to all of you in today's Calcutta Business School's Center of Excellence arranged webinar on competing with supply chain management. We have four great panelists today with us here today and I shall be introducing them shortly. I warmly welcome our core committee members, Mr. Shaurav Ghosh, advisor, Shikshayatan Foundation, our secretary general, Mrs. Bratati Bhattacharya, Principal, Dr. Shuman Kumar Don, Moderator, Professor Sanjeev Biswas, and all professors, students, staff present here today. Before we start, let me show you a short video about Calcutta Business School and its connection with Shikshayatan Foundation, the apex body of Calcutta Business School, which is celebrating 100 years of legacy in educational excellence. May we have the video, please, Mr. Ashish Kabi? If excelling is your essence, then you are welcome to Calcutta Business School, Center of Excellence centered on excellence. It all started in the year 1920, when some eminent industrialists of Kolkata founded the Marwari Balika Vidyalaya. Later, in 1954, Sri Shikshayatan School was founded 
and in 1955 Sri Shikshayatan College came into being with the objective of further propagating quality education to girls. All these institutions have continued to excel under the management of the Shikshayatan Foundation. It has been guided by industrialists like President Mr. S.K. Birla, Director Emeritus, Birla Brothers Private Limited, Mr. Siddharth Birla, Vice President, Mr. G.K. Khetan, Trustee and President of Shikshayatan College, Mr. Aris Goinka, Trustee and MD of Imami Group, and many other reputed industrialists. The Secretary General of the Foundation is Mrs. Brothuti Bhattacharya. Greetings. I would like to speak a few words about our institution, the Shikshayatan Foundation. The year was 1920 when some of my forefathers uh, thought that female education needed to be propagated much more actively than was the custom in those days. And we donated from our family two buildings in the heart of Bada Bazaar. Uh, for girl, for the girl's child to be educated there. That institution is still working. The latest addition to our bouquet of institutions has been the Calcutta Business School, which was started a few years ago uh, on a 15-acre plot of land and uh, not very far away from IIM Calcutta. Calcutta Business School offers an AICTE-approved, autonomous, two-year full-time residential program on postgraduate diploma in management, majoring in subjects like finance, marketing, IT, operations and human resource. But it's the unique cluster of courses that sets it apart. Interactive and intuitive games like management game and stock market simulation game. It also puts heavy emphasis on data handling and business analytics and uses databases and software like CMIE Prowess, MetaStock, R and SAP. Kolkata is the city of joy. It is the cultural capital of India, a city which has its soulful embodiment of culture, love, mystery, respect and enthusiasm. A city that upholds a perfect juxtaposition between the old world and the modern one. It has given us many Nobel laureates over the years. It has iconic institutes like the Calcutta University, the National Library, Presidency University, Bisho Bharati, IIM Calcutta and many such legendary institutes. Calcutta Business School's AICTE approved PGDM program is carrying forward this rich legacy of Kolkata. Thank you. May I now request our Secretary General Shikshayatan Foundation, Mrs. Brothuti Bhattacharya, to say a few words on objectives and purpose of doing webinars. Ma'am, you are muted. Ma'am, you are still muted. We can't hear you. Yes, yes. Now, can you hear me? Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, yes. A very good evening to everyone, to all the participants, to our very, very esteemed uh, you know, panelist, to our moderator, and definitely to our MC. Dr. Parijat Upadhyay, Associate Professor, I am Chigaziabad, Mr. Omshuma Neel Basu, Secretary, ASCP, Mr. Pratik Bisha, City Head, Big Basket, Mr. Nazibul Rehman, DS Operation Head, Flipkart India. We are extremely happy that Nazibul is also a panelist. In fact, he's our student. So definitely it gives us a pride that you know he's there. Thank you for being here. We welcome all of you for this, uh, you know, for a very, very interesting session. Yes, uh, Ms. Shudeshna, you've told me that why we have chosen this webinar as uh, a way of learning. 
as you know that you know with uh, this no, no, no. i think uh, some people are not muted i am continuing okay. yes as all of you know that digital learning environments have increasingly you know it has become popular in higher education and in professional training this was definitely there but probably we did not take it so seriously the way we have taken it okay. you know in the last one and a half year teaching and learning via you know this webinar definitely represents you know one approach uh, it's an approach I think there is a bit of a disturbance. Uh, can everybody all, all, be muted? All, all participants, uh, please uh, mute yourself. Please mute yourself. Yeah, thank you so much. So I'll just continue that, you know, we, we definitely at this business school, we, we adopt different kind of approaches in our teaching and learning uh, system. And, you know, we have picked up webinar as a way of learning because, you know, business schools, as you all of us know that, you know, we have to keep in mind the transformation that is taking not only in India, but throughout the globe and where, you know, we need to be uh, sticking uh, to different things you know which are ongoing learning from one another and webinar probably is one way which we can do it in a very very simplified manner uh, yes um, uh, you know sometimes the timing the objective of the subject if these are things you know which are very interesting in a very very easy way we can reach out remotely to many people and that is what we have adopted and we have seen that you know it is helping our students so we have to remember and you know that the pandemic definitely has induced us a great uh, belief in a global connection and it gives us an opportunity to have a very very strong virtual global education program and today we are going to discuss about supply chain and i'm sure all of us know that sitting in uh, you know our own houses uh, from last year and doing so many activities from uh, you know a particular room or maybe in your home we need to optimize supply chain. And this has become so very important today that this particular topic we have chosen for the webinar. We feel that you know this topic will reach out to many people remotely and you know in a synchronous manner so that we can also optimize our viewers. And definitely we would like to learn from all the people who have come as panelists. Thank you so much. Already, I think um, Dr. Shumon uh, Daw has mentioned that he has uh, sent invitation throughout uh, the nation. And also we sent invitation in the international level so that people can listen to all our panelists. Thank you so much for being here once again from Shikshayatan uh, Foundation, which is celebrating its 100 years and from Calcutta Business School. Welcome everyone, and thanks a lot for being here. Over to you, Ms. Shudeshna. Ma'am, you are muted. Let us proceed to the webinar, and let me have the privilege of introducing our panelists today. We have Mr. Anshuman Neel Basu, Dr. Parijat Upadhyay, Mr. Pratik Biswas, and Mr. Nazibul Rahman. Mr. Anshuman Neel Basu is the Director of CM Programs and Secretary General of Association of Supply Chain Professionals India. He is also the India Coordinator for Global Environment Center. He has vast experience of working both in India and Middle East in various functions of supply chain management. He has 24 years of rich experience in various leadership roles. He conceptualized the first international supply chain conference in India in 2007. Welcome to the webinar, sir. 
Dr. Parichat Upadhyay is an experienced information technology and supply chain management professional with demonstrated history of working in the information technology and services industry. He is skilled in analytical skills, coaching, lecturing, team building, and curriculum development. He is specialized in ERP implementation and has a vast experience in academics in leading academic institutes of India, including ISBM, IMT Nagpur, and Ghaziabad. Welcome to the webinar, sir. Mr. Pratik Biswas has more than 12 years experience in the field of sales operations and distribution strategy implementation in reputed companies like Marico, Motorola, Nokia, Airtel. An engineer professionally, he is an organized leader who is able to see ahead to set goals and he achieves this with his exemplary com communication skills. He is a sales professional with in-depth knowledge of sales strategies and method of execution. Our last panelist, Mr. Nazibul Rahman, welcome to your alma mater. Mr. Rahman, we are proud to state that he is our alumni and today he is here present as a speaker. He is specialized in operations management. He is experienced in retail and warehouse operations and has worked with Future Group, Reliance Industries, and currently he is with Flipkart India. Welcome to the webinar, Mr. Rahman. Our moderator for the webinar, Professor Sanjeev Biswas, is an assistant professor with Calcutta Business School, and his areas of teaching include decision sciences, operations management, and information systems. I now request Professor Biswas to take over from this point and take the webinar forward. Over to you, sir. Thank you, madam, uh, for your introduction. Good evening, uh, respected core committee member, our principal, Professor Shuman Kumar Don, my faculty colleagues, our respected panelists, my students, and all of the participants who joined out from outside uh, Calcutta Business School. Though we feel yourself as a very much of a part of Calcutta Business School. So today's topic is uh, competing with supply chain management, a topic which is something uh, very important and very pertinent to, to, all, to all the organizations, irrespective of, uh, irrespective of their nature, irrespective of their functionality. So every, every organization feels like that this is one of the area which gives them a competitive advantage. St stating simply, Supply chain is all interconnected, interdependent active, uh, flow of activities which connects the demand to supply from the point of origination to the point of consumption. Supply chain has a, a, a several a, a role to play on different dimensions. On one side, it uh, provides the customer the right product at the right time uh, in right quantity and most importantly, as per their convenience with a shorter lead time. And on the other side, it actually generates surplus for the entire chain to uh, benefit all the members who are forming that chain. It increases the cash flow. And in the sense, it uh, actually helps the organizations to enhance their fine uh, to go uh, to improve their financial positions. And in addition to these activities, supply chain has the role in ensuring uh, the social sustainability in terms of humanitarian supply chain or disaster relief supply chain, then to ensure the environmental sustainability and of course the economic sustainability. So supply chain is enabling the organizations to ensure the sustainability. Now what we have witnessed from 2011 that we are experiencing industry 4.0 the age where uh, we are experiencing close interactions between cyber, uh, between the computer and human beings. So utilizing more and more data and analytics are being utilized uh, tremendously for understanding not only the stated need of the users or consumers, but also the unstated needs as well. So with this uh, humongous amount of data availability, availability of cheap,
availability of uh, software, advanced software and hardware. This has added a new dimension to the supply chain management as it is now controlled by Internet of Things, advanced robotics automation. And in addition to that, we are heading towards Society 5.0, the age uh, which believes in creating human-centric society with the help of technology. And not, not uh, last but not the least, the recent pandemic has taught us enormously that how to be resilient under extreme disruption. So with this, I am sure that our uh, respected panel members would throw light on these of the vital areas. So what we have, uh, what we have planned for this webinar is that the we have we would be the our esteemed panelists uh, would be discussing on four topics. Like one is obviously that why supply chain management, how it is going to add value to the organization or helps them to achieve competitive advantage. The next dimension would be what are the current trends of supply chain or to what age or to what direction it is moving. And obviously the third and one of the most important aspect of supply chain management is the how exciting is the career in supply chain management. What are the opportunities for the upcoming young professionals to uh, grow in this industry and how they can build them up, how they can develop themselves. And finally, obviously, I we have among ourselves one of the young uh, supply chain professional who happens to be our student. We are very proud of him. So he will also share his initial days experience in the domain of supply chain management. So without any delay, it's my privilege and pleasure to in, uh, invite our first panelist, Mr. Pratik Biswas, to address the audience on the first topic that why supply chain management, why it is so important for the organizations. Sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Vishwas. Uh, so I hope I am audible and clear. Uh, so uh, first of all, thanks a lot uh, to uh, for inviting me in this uh, panel discussion. And uh, as you have already discussed, uh, said that it, this is a very, very uh, nice topic to head on with the kind of situation we are facing, especially after uh, pandemic. So every single business is now dependent on two major things. One is IT, that is the IT infrastructure, and obviously the SCM, which is the uh, uh, supply chain management. So since I am from Big Basket, I will uh, first like to have a small brief of uh, what our company does, what we do, do, and then I will move on to the subject. So uh, in terms of uh, the concept of Big Basket, uh, we are the great uh, biggest one of the biggest online grocery supermarket in india and i am heading bb daily which is one uh, you can say a subscription model of uh, big basket it is a sister cousin of big basket so we started our uh, uh, services in kolkata from on to, in 2018 that i am talking about bb daily and uh, we started with only 16 subscriptions the first day I remember. I uh, was the guy who launched this uh, uh, service in Kolkata. And uh, right now, proud to say that we are delivering more than 4 lakh orders per month, uh, which is uh, 4 lakh touch points every single month in the city of Calcutta. So moving on from there, uh, let's uh, go to the next uh, point, which is the e-commerce uh, sphere, which is again a very, very, uh, very, very uh, significant and very, very uh, fast growing industry in the country, in our country right now. And as we can see, it is it can be in, uh, it started with intangible products like ticket booking, uh, cinema, uh, 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 ticket booking, et cetera. However, it has moved on and matured on to uh, uh, things which are more product driven, product driven right now. And the complexity of products are increasing day by day. Uh, I will delve into it uh, in the coming time. Uh, now, when we get into that product, it is more into the reach to home. Uh, as Mr. Vishwas has already said, it is more into the reach to home in a very good quality in the desired quantity and obviously with the desired price. So 
so this is going to be a uh, and it is right now a very very big challenge for the uh, scm chain which is if we want to define it it is a simple process of reaching the product from a raw material stage to the uh, final stage which can be consumed by the uh, customer so uh, this was a little bit of gist of uh, my company e-commerce uh, which is my uh, segment which is my industry and uh, uh, now i will like to move on to the topic on which i have been invited to uh, speak in this uh, uh, in this discussion which is how supply chain adds value to the business and why it is important so as i said that as the products have come into the picture hence the supply chain has become the most integral part of uh, our industry especially a industry like e-commerce so uh, we are all familiar with names like uh, flipkart amazon uh, big basket grofers uh, at this point of time and these are uh, all these companies deliver different kind of products most of them are marketplaces however to maintain quality as well as to maintain the timelines timelines of deliveries experience of service it is very important to hold the inventory also and there is one thing which is very 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 important right now which is the last mile delivery concept this is where most of the companies either succeed or fail if we are concerned about the last mile delivery then there are a lot of uh, you can say ambiguity a lot of challenge in how we are going to reach out to customer and here the customer also has a demand where the reverse logistics comes in and hence this whole way of su supply chain in e especially in e-commerce is a very very versatile and very very vibrant field as of today so uh, to take this discussion for, uh, further i will like to uh, just uh, uh, do a simple presentation to maintain this flow of uh, uh, job so uh, if you can please uh, allow me to share my screen Asis. mr viswas ashish Asis, are you there? Asis. So Asis, till the time please, uh, you can make the, him a, a host, you know, yes, co-host. Yes. Then co he can only show it. Yes. yes. So what I have tried to do is, uh, uh, since we are into a very kind of running business, I have tried to put this whole concept of a uh, value. and uh, uh, importance into some of the uh, you kind of you can say a kind of a flow chart so that it is uh, more clear to the students who are attending this seminar and can be explained easily uh, i am just trying to get the uh, participant uh, screen sharing so that i can share my screen ashish kobi Can you please make him the co-host? so should i continue without the ppt maybe i can uh, speak it out just a second uh, mr viswas i'm just taking care of I think, uh, uh, Mr. Viswas, you just uh, continue with your discussion. 
I just uh, uh, since uh, for some technical glitch he is not getting contacted. So you just continue your discussion later on uh, in between. I we will make you a host. Then finally after your uh, end of your discussion, you just show us the. Let, let us go through the slides. Okay. Okay. So, you, so uh, if, if I, I could have uh, shown it uh, in a slide, it would have made more sense to the students who are who will be. Yeah, actually... we are trying. So you just start discussion. Let's see. Okay. 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 So so uh, in that presentation, what I, I was trying to uh, convey is that the e-commerce have three uh, three main uh, uh, you can say segments, which is there to deliver the service desired service to the customer so first is the it which is of, of course the application and the back end infra which provides the overall uh, platform on which every single thing is done in e-commerce then there comes the marketing part so the marketing part is the digital and traditional marketing so uh, there are uh, very uh, different types of marketing which is in play right now and this marketing actually is targeted to let the customer know and inspire the customer to use the services. However, the most important part, which is by because we are dealing with a physical product here, so the most important part is a supply chain. Now, for Big Basket, a company like Big Basket, and especially a company like Big Basket Daily, it becomes very, very important because we are handling very different kind of a products. So there are products which can be easily handled. There are products which are to be handled more carefully. And there are products which are uh, 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 products like fruits, vegetables, which are perishable. And obviously there are uh, products like fish and meat uh, and uh, uh, frozen Sorry material. To interact, Mr. Biswas, you, you can now share your screen. Okay, okay, thank you. Sorry for the inconvenience. No issues. No issues. Yeah, so is it visible? visible? Yes, yes. So, uh, as I said, uh, uh, so how supply chain adds value to the business. So, I have highlighted the word value here and why it is important. So, I have highlighted the word important here because these two words are the most important uh, words to be uh, discussed in this uh, 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 webinar. Now, if I talk about uh, e-commerce, I will flow fast because I have already explained it. So in a, in a type of e-commerce platform we are, so we have IT, which is the application and backend data, marketing and supply chain. So supply chain is obviously how, we, how the products and services are acquired and delivered by, by the company, which is basically service for, a, for, for the customer. Now, if we say about the adding value to the, to the supply chain, so if you see, uh, first I will take the value means different thing for this company and for the customer. So for the customer, uh, we'll start with the customer. It is simply delivery. Okay. I am talking only on the perspective of supply chain. So customer is only, uh, he is uh, concerned about whether the product is delivered in the right condition, in the right weight, which is supposed to be, supposed to be and in the right quality and at right time. And obviously there is a, concept of return which has come in that the customer wants that if he doesn't like the product then he should be able to return it or refund it however from the company side it is all about service service is the thing which actually keeps the customer to with the company for a longer period of time now for company if you say what is a value though then it can be simply put into two parts which is a cost and the earning for the company now, if uh, we say about the earning, so in case of earning, what happens is that I am talking totally in terms of e-commerce and especially in terms of uh, the kind of business we do, which is in big basket. And in for other companies also, what is concern is the volume of the order. So the customer, how much order he is giving, what is the volume? So there are a customer which is who is giving 13 pieces, 15 pieces, 17 pieces. What is the variety of uh, uh, items he is deliver, uh, ordering, whether he is ordering only FMCG or he is ordering milk with it, or he is ordering FMCG plus FNV, which is food, uh, fruits and vegetables or fish or meat. It depends on that, uh, uh, that 
order size and the type of order that what will be the earning of the company second is the obviously the frequency of order so uh, like in bb daily we are more concerned about the daily daily order and hence we have gone into subscription model then there is a type of material which i have already said that what is the product which is to be delivered uh, and depending on that there will be depending uh, it will the wastage of the product during handling as well as the margin of the product will depend and at last what is uh, sorry i have moved on okay so the last one is the most important which is right now the speed of delivery so how that delivery is happening whether the customer wants it in 1 hour 2 hour 3 hour 1 day 2 day 3 day so depending on that uh, in case of especially fmcg in case of more than that fnv and fnm we have to deliver it fast to the customer and fresh to the customer so there the overall concept of the uh, the supply chain adding on to the value how we are delivering becomes very important then comes the cost part which is of course the procurement it is entirely so what i feel is the value chain the control of the value chain is the most important thing to manage cost everything can be planned however if it is not executed properly on ground then it will lead to wastages so most of the e-commerce companies have actually failed most of the e-commerce companies because they were not able to handle the product or time these are the two main factors on ground during execution so for cost obviously it can be taken into three uh, major types one is the procurement which is from the vendors or we also purchase for the farmers second is holding it which is warehousing this is one of the biggest and most complex uh, uh, games in the field of uh, e-commerce and in overall field of supply chain it requires a lot um, amount of energy time as well as space and then the last mile delivery which i have told that the last mile delivery how you are planning your last mile delivery is the crux of the game in most of the e-commerce companies right now and especially for the companies who are actually dealing with groceries as well as more complex products like your fnv fruits and vegetables and fnm which is fish and meat so the last mile deliveries is the most highly complicated cost structure which actually if solved and executed properly will give the best value to the system through supply chain so i have uh, i think uh, in that uh, in a small amount of time which i have got i have been able to give some kind of a idea on how these supply chain is the most important part uh, along with of course it support for any company to survive and grow in the competitive marketing uh, market of e-commerce so uh, next i will move on to the point of importance so we have uh, understood that what is all this concept of supply chain and supply chain value which we are talking about now if you see the part of importance so importance is how the supply chain is going to sustain my business and grow my profitability so what is it adding value to my my concept of giving service to the customer first of all supply chain actually gives the company the power to offer unique offerings and services to the customers i will give the most prominent example we were the first players one of the first and biggest players in fruits and vegetables and then uh, fish and meat categories in in the country and we have championed it to an extent where other companies are now having that courage to try and make a, uh, uh, a, a attempt to deliver it to the customer that is all been possible because of the supply chain uh, the the kind of supply chain we have developed and the kind of uh, focus we have given to the supply chain starting from the field where we procure the product from the farmer 
to the warehouse where we sort it out and when we prepare to deliver to the customer and then finally that a process of delivery including the timeline of delivery as well as the quality of delivery which we offer second is the customer satisfaction so obviously when you are not, if you are not able to satisfy the customer then of course it is going to be very very hard to sustain or to retain the customer so for that what the what the, what the most important thing the supply chain does is to preserve the quality and quantity as well as the overall texture of the product to be delivered the best product which is delivered on time with proper uh, functionality proper taste in whatever field you say will get the customer more enthusiastic towards your company and services and hence it will prolong the uh, uh, customer life in your system as well as the customer value in your system and the last is the cost optimization as we have already seen cost is the most major thing most of the e-commerce companies in india are making loss it is a new segment most of the people are still experimenting trying to find out what is the balance between the cost as well as uh, the uh, earnings which which they can earn so the cost optimization part in uh, scm it gives that company that muscle and the power to actually go there and serve their customer uh, with a lot of integrity as well as a lot of uh, quality hence if we put all these three things together then we can get a business which is both sustainable and uh, will give me profitability uh, so uh, that is uh, mostly what i wanted to discuss uh, with in this uh, webinar and i think uh, my uh, time is almost up uh, so uh, i will again thank my uh, friends in in this uh, webinar uh, all the distinguished gentlemen and uh, thank you thank you sir uh, for uh, explaining the concept of supply chain and its importance so lucidly and uh, so elaborately within a short span of time it is now my uh, pleasure and honor to invite professor uh, parija tupadhyay sir uh, the stage is yours now we request you to elaborate the current trends the changing pattern of supply chain and what you foresee in coming 10 years down the line about the supply chain management thank you thank you professor biswas uh, i hope i hope i'm audible yes okay thank you uh respected uh, secretary general ma'am uh, respected principal sir other distinguished faculty members of calcutta business school and uh, it is an other uh, delegates who are actually attending this session it is indeed a privilege and i'm thankful to cvs for inviting me to be a part of this uh, very very uh, thought provoking webinar and uh, it makes uh, i i must thank mr biswas who spoke just before me uh, because he has actually laid the foundation for me to uh, talk about right so and in a way right uh, as a faculty member i find that uh, more or less uh, all the topics have all the issues he has covered right so he has given you a foundation what is supply chain is all about uh but the problem with academicians like us right who undertake some amount of research in the area of supply chain particularly in context to emerging countries uh is that uh, we tend to be critical uh, regarding the practices right uh so to start off with as i said that uh, mr biswas is uh, associated with the big basket and uh, i would like to convey to him that i have been a regular uh, buyer or a subscription uh from uh, big basket and uh, the thing is that uh, uh, more than anything uh, okay fine and and we should congratulate big basket for being a part of the tata group now right so uh, but the thing is that uh, when you look at uh, supply chain uh, from a critical perspective there are things that needs to be explored and that is what i uh, invite my students here in this uh, webinar 
to think critically that uh, what Mr. Pratik was talking about, that value part of it, right? So how we as a practitioner or being passionate about supply chain can lead to have more value? Can we possibly team up with Big Basket or for that matter, any other big companies who are struggling in some aspect of supply chain domain aspect, right? to help them to increase value this. So one way we can do it is basically that giving them the feedback, right? Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Biswas, that it is always companies like this that uh, if we can reach out to them, if we can talk to them and give them honest feedback that they would be able to uh, improve upon it, right? So uh, that is one part of it. Uh, now, uh, since I have been, uh, Professor Biswas has given me a mandate that as an uh, academician, what do I find? So I will basically fall back upon my experience uh, from the projects that I have done in the supply chain, some consultancy projects that I have done in the supply chain domain. Uh, so uh, to talk about uh, the challenges and the growing, growing trends, we can come later. Maybe we can also uh, uh, touch upon it. So uh, first of all, we can talk about that when we look at a supply chain, uh, we should have clarity regarding the upstream and the downstream supply chain, right? So uh, as Mr. Biswas was saying that the industry practice, right? So looking at the distribution part of it, right? Uh, but apart from it, that when we are a part of company, let's say if I am a part of big basket or something else, do I have the full visibility of the upstream supply chain or the downstream supply chain? Uh, so these two is, are very important concept and they have to be, when you strategize, right? You need to strategize with a different uh, spectrum. You cannot apply the same uh, strategy to deal with your upstream supply chain issues or your downstream supply chain issues. Uh, let's take for one example, uh, I think, uh, a couple of words which has been the buzzwords or which has been very common to all of us during this pandemic is something like that. Okay, fine. You should get used to this. This is the new normal. Okay. Uh, uh, frankly speaking, I never used to understand. Okay. What apart from what is being normal distribution in static state that what is the new normal? Okay. So for students, uh, they have been told that, okay, uh, that online education, going forward, online education is the new normal. So better they get, should get used to it, right? Similarly, we in industry as well, that they are also talking to this because uh, if you look at what has happened in the last one and a half year, or for that matter, if you can look back from the point, from the time of demonetization as well, you will find that there has been a lot of disruptions in the supply chain. Now, just one example, let's say a couple of years back, there was a severe flood in Malaysia and Indonesia, right? There was a severe flood in Malaysia and Indonesia. Uh, I think whosoever it is, can you put your mic on mute, please? Fair enough, thank you. Sir, continue, sir. Yeah. So, so there was a flood in Malaysia and here Maruti was saying that uh, you might have booked a vehicle with Maruti and Maruti is saying that we cannot deliver it on time because you know, there is a flood in Malaysia. Now, if you give this kind of an explanation to the end customer, will he take that? So he will try and understand flood to Malaysia mein ho rahi. Yaha par tum, aapko gaadi dene mein kya problem hai? But the problem is there that the entire chain chain that we are talking about, that is a highly integrated chain with one link having a lot of dependencies on the other. And this chain and dependencies has been much more exposed during this pandemic. If you, if you look, I believe all of us go to the newspapers and I believe 80% of who are attending this session might have been affected by the COVID or the coronavirus. So at some point of time, at least sitting in Maharashtra or in let's say uh, Ghaziabad, what we found is that there was a huge scarcity of some medicines, some, some medicines, some injections. So why it is happening? The thing is that we have never been exposed to this kind of scarcity and 
we have over dependence on chinese apis to provide us the raw material for our vaccine so we, we never thought of like this that there's going one, one day there's going to be a coronavirus for which the medicines the raw material for this medicine is going to come from china and china in itself is going to be badly affected as a result of which we are left to fend for ourselves so what do we do in this case so that leads us to the second point that is your demand how do we manage the demand and supply uncertainty it is implied when you talk about supply chain a uh, supply chain framework be it in the upstream supply chain or in the downstream supply chain it is there that is going to be an implied demand and supply uncertainty so when i take a sessions let's say uh, we regularly uh, uh, do sessions with asian paints and maruti i generally ask the participants of my mdp sessions that okay and uh, my participants are generally who are into the forecasting and all this stuff so i i ask the asian friends guys okay are you guys doing a good job this is the first question that i start up uh, start my session with so they say yes sir we are doing a good job i said how can you say that then they will say sir we have been growing the profit has been growing uh, and then we don't find lot of complaints customers are happy i said fine now can you answer me one question i said yes tell us sir. so do you ever find a situation wherein you have stocked out or there is an inventory to which they said yes it's happened regularly i said then you guys are not doing a good job so if you are doing a proper forecasting and you have all these tools and techniques like mr biswas was talking about there is it there it providing you the support there is iot fair enough but what about the last mile i am not talking about the last mile connectivity i am now talking about how do you capture the end point demand so if you look at asian paints for example again as i said this comes from my project experience you will find that the transformation that has taken place as far as taking they are taking the Uh, getting a market demand is concerned right so what they have been doing right previously they used to have wherein the sales people used to come to the stocking stock points of asian paints and they used to ask ye shade ka kitna liter lagega ye shade ka kitna liter lagega ye shade ka kitna liter lagega and accordingly he used to put in some figures there and thereafter at the end of the week you are putting you are keying in the data in a master excel sheet and sending it to your banduk plant then there was a batch processing that was taking place and that is giving you some kind of a production figure which is going to be met for the next maybe next month or the next quarter gone are those days those days are gone now you will find that these people this asian paints uh, sales people right they are actually going to the dealer point carrying a tab with them and keying in the data then and there and just the way when the moment you enter enter right that data get transmitted to your production production department so you can see this the improvement that has taken place so it has played a lot of role but still the question remains then why is this stock out why is it the case that during diwali if you are in the mood of painting your house you go to the asian paint shop and you ask for can you have my mera wala paint or mera wala shade they said sorry bahut high demand hai abhi nahi milega 15 din baad aaiye that means the company is losing that market if if asian paints are not able to give me i will go to berger i will go to somebody else right so the thing is even if asian paints has created this market it gives that demand on a plate to its competitor who is losing asian paints is losing the somewhere or the other the forecasting department or the planning department is responsible for this and these are the people who are attending my session i said then you guys are not doing a good job so can you possibly say this is not happening they say no no sir this is happening i said yes the th this is happening because the sales people of asian paints don't have an access to the go downs of your stockists so if the stockist wish to do something of a let's say they want to keep a margin or do on the black marketing 
they will never ever they will never ever allow you company people to come to the go down or the warehouse and see how many liters of white paints or blue paint is already there they are just doing it on the basis of buffering it out maybe okay last time i showed 220 200 liters this side market a bit lagta hai aur 2% add kar dete hain so make it 220 liters so can you tell us what is the basis of adding the 20 liters so if this 20 liters is basically creating that fl infl this plated graph which we call in supply chain as the bull wave effect and if there is a bull wave effect nobody in the chain actually incurs profit there might be some short term gains for the retailer but in the long run nobody who is associated with the supply chain will be gaining so there are things which are happening right and companies do have to have some amount of insight where they have to find some kind of mechanism where they can peek into the warehouse so is company is not doing it yes they are doing it you have this rfid chips you have all these things uh, things and all but again uh, given a country like india we have lot of challenges right how to what extent you can actually implement them is a big task right coming to third point there are transportation challenges right and i club them with what we are experiencing right now see there is no dearth of vaccines means as a, in the sense that some of you will challenge me but then why we are not getting a vaccine the thing is that we don't have our transportation and logistics mechanism in place that is the reason we have this sputnik we have some other vaccines right but i believe all of us are aware that it requires a special kind of a storage we need to keep them at minus 15 degrees or minus 20 degrees and the transportation has to be done in a very very sophisticated cold chain uh, vehicles which is a scarcity which is a very very highly specialized thing in our country so there is a dearth of cold chain in our country as well which are very much in demand which was exposed to us during this pandemic wherein each vaccines or different uh, medicines and all or different perishable items right they required to be kept at a variable temperature where, and we are not yet that mature our warehouses are not mature to deal with them so that part is there coming to the next part uh, what uh, mr pratik has already touched upon uh, what is a big big challenge for a country like india is last mile distribution how do i find the actual customer who is placing the order and delivering it on time the right time the right quantity the right place in the right condition and all sorts of rights and all so it's very very challenging it's very challenging right so uh, the better the 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 uh, i would i'll put it like this way uh, the sooner the companies are able to find a way out to this or they can effectively reach out to the last mile delivery problem right e-commerce as such will have a better results to show as far as our country is concerned then let's not forget the legal and humanitarian challenges right we all have seen this migratory workers right i have done some studies with uh, in uh, west bengal with tantujo right tantujo as you know it is a conglomerate it is a common cities uh, umbrella organization which tries to bring together skilled and semi skilled uh, weavers so there is a supply chain uh, there as well now i do keep a track of what is going on during this time of pandemic and one thing that has come up in a very big way is the agility that is required on the part of a company to respond to the environmental and business challenges so what i mean by saying this is in context to tantujo who are quite comfortable coming up with garments and textiles and something like that right all of a sudden they find that the market has dried up the market has crashed the demand has crashed to the extent of 90% so what do i do so i would like to bring to the focus that that management of tantujo in collaboration with government of west bengal they have taken some very very timely steps in order to
to re-energize the humanitarian supply chain, reskill the semi-skilled weavers, and get them to produce produce products which are much in demand during this pandemic, like your this aprons, your hand sanitizers, and something of those kind. As a result of which, these people were not thrown out of business altogether. Right? So challenges are there, but the thing is that it all depends to what extent and with what agility we can possibly respond to those challenges. And the last one that I want to talk about, it is the lack of skilled manpower in our country. Couple of years back, I was attending, uh, I was one of the speakers in a NASCOM summit on supply chain uh, issues. And we had a person from Germany. He said that for German companies, our truck divers, our logistic partners, our warehouse managers are our brand ambassadors. Now cut to India, what is the scenario in India? Who is transporting your goods? Do you treat him with the same kind of a respect, same kind of, give him the same kind of a facility that you will be giving to a, a senior level executive? The answer is no. And another thing that I think that has come up very big way with what Mr. Biswas was saying, that I think he talked about, he mentioned the word cost, cost and cost, because that is the perspective that we have. We perceive that supply chain and operation is out and out a cost center. So unless and until we believe the other way around, we do understand it is a cost center. But if we cannot appreciate that, yes, it is actually giving us the profitability, right? We won't be able to attract good amount of uh, professionals or good amount of uh, skills or good amount of talents to take this uh, profession forward. So that's all from my side. I think I have outlined five or six uh, challenges as well as issues which companies are facing as well as some measures what companies have been doing to address this. So I'll be open to questions. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, raise it during the quick Q&A hour. Uh, we'll address them. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, sir, for uh, wonderfully uh, explain the burning topics or burning areas or challenging areas of supply chain management. It's now my pleasure to invite uh, Mr. Anshuman Neil Basu, a very experienced professional in the area of supply chain and logistics management. Uh, my question to Mr. Basu is that that how is the how exciting is the career in supply chain management? I mean, I've, uh, we have a lot of students who are participating in this webinar, and many of them are aspiring to become a supply chain manager in their uh, career path. So how exciting supply chain management as a career option. And in order to become a successful manager in supply chain management domain, what are the essential qualities they should hone up to become a successful person, a professional in the life? So these two are broad questions, but the stage is yours now, Mr. Basu, you can talk according to your uh, thought process. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Professor Biswas. Uh, this is a very uh, pertinent question and I'll answer that, uh, of course, and I think I'll give a brief overview about uh, what I feel about supply chain and I think that will probably answer uh, the question. Uh, but before that, certainly I would like to thank uh, uh, your school, uh, Calcutta Business School, for inviting me here today. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Sudeshna Ghosh for the brief introduction that she gave and thank you very much for that. And also to the Secretary General, uh, Ms. Pratati uh, Bhattacharya. In fact, she summarized why we are talking about supply chain today, you know. So that's, that, that was very interesting. I mean, out of all topics, you know, certainly the entire focus is on supply chain and the whole world is actually focusing on supply chain today. So uh, very important topic, of course, and I, I'm, I'm very glad myself because uh, being uh, running this association, I feel, you know, if, when I see people, when I see institutes, when I see students talking about supply chain, it really feels good because uh, till a few years back, you know, we used to at least explain people like what supply chain is. Now, I, I think uh, Corona has, this Corona pandemic and all has really uh, showed everybody uh, like, you know, the importance of a very efficient supply chain. Uh, before I uh, uh, give my views, I think... Uh, 
I just I have to mention that uh, Mr. Biswas Pratik Biswas gave a presentation about um, a very good presentation about uh, you know the processes and the uh, different elements in supply chain. Professor uh, Parijat Upadhyay also gave uh, a very good overview about a lot of things like you know pull uh, uh, whip effect and why uh, about the demand planning part and everything. I mean the importance of supply chain today. So I think those are very pertinent points, but. Uh, I think I will just add on to those things. Uh, like one one of the points which uh, Professor Parijat mentioned is about uh, you know the inventory part. You know whether you do you, you have stocks during a critical time and all. So that is uh, something like I mean I'm sure uh, the students here probably would be aware of um, uh, the concept of uh, uh, just in time. So I think that that concept is certainly you know very much applicable in today's times in supply chain, but. Today, I think more than just in time, the concept of just in case has to be applied in supply chain because you know uh, this vaccine supply chain and all these things uh, during this pandemic, uh, the e-commerce and every, uh, all these uh, you know deliveries of essential items have really shown us that uh, just in case kind of supply chain is also very important. Another thing which we have to uh, uh, understand is supply chain should be responsible. Supply chain, uh, you know, today many countries have changed the term of supply chain. They are calling it responsible chain, value chain, responsible chain. So uh, in order to, uh, you know, uh, uh, strengthen our supply chain, I think, uh, you know, we need to be very, having very, very disciplined behavior in logistics system. So that's very important. We know about, uh, you know, uh, that behind uh, the success of any uh, developed or developing nation, Efficient supply chain management is critical because it increases competitiveness, uh, you know, responsiveness, um, and thereby, of course, customer satisfaction by reaching goods and services uh, with quality and affordability. However, that is not enough. Today, if you are just talking about, uh, you know, uh, the transportation or demand planning or warehousing, supply chain is much more than that. It's today, if we have to excel globally, compete globally, then we need to go several steps further to bring customer delight and just not uh, you know, uh, customer uh, satisfaction. So that customer satisfaction is a thing of the past now. I mean, that's, that's very much taken for granted. It's more about customer delight. And you know, and time is the key. I mean, I uh, uh, very frequently talk about a concept called omotonashi. Omotonashi is a Japanese term uh, and I've been talking about this term for the last many years now in India in all the supply chain forums. And I would certainly like to talk about it here today. Omotonashi is a Japanese term wherein they, you know, it's like a uh, concept which Japanese people live on. It's just not in supply chain, it's in their everyday, everyday uh, day to day life uh, activities. It's actually anticipating the customer's needs. So it is just not delivering the item or delivering the good, goods. So it's basically anticipating the customer needs and taking that extra step. And that makes the customer happy. Or probably you can retain the customer that way. And that's the future everywhere in supply chain. Like uh, Mr. Pratik said, uh, you know, uh, Pratik Vishwas said that, uh, you know, it's very important for uh, you know, companies, e-commerce companies today to retain their customers. And customers can be retained only through Fantastic customer delight, just not customer satisfaction. Just receiving the goods in some condition or a, probably in a particular time frame is one thing. But if you are doing something extra through supply chain, efficient supply chain, that's going to be the differentiator in competition in tomorrow's time. Probably, and it's already started everywhere else in the world. India, sadly, I would say, is a little bit lagging behind, and we have to catch up with that. One of the things which, uh, so I spoke about uh, Omotonashi and I think uh, this is something which I would like to emphasize to the budding uh, you know, students who would like to have a career in supply chain. So uh, uh, another thing which uh, I would like to emphasize is there's a concept I think which everybody knows called Jugad. Many people and I think many corporates take pride in saying that we have done Jugaad and you know, they, they, they take pride in saying that you know, we, through Jugaad we are doing all these things. 
I would say, and this is also something which I have been talking about in many forums, and I have written it in uh, some articles also. We have to shed this culture of jugad in supply chain. Jugad can only, you know, lead to mediocrity. If you want to just deliver goods somehow, just to keep the uh, jugad, could be good when it is inventions, when it is, uh, you know, uh, creating something new. But when it comes to supply chain, if you need to excel, you need to shed the culture of jugad. That is not something which is something to be very proud of. So that is something which, you know, I think every budding supply chain professional should understand that just by doing some, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, some ways of delivering, you know, just making it some kind of shortcut or doing some something just to get the shipment delivered. So we did it. At least the, uh, our KRA is over. So just meeting the KRA is not important. Meeting with excellence is important. And that is what is happening in global supply chain. If you have to compete globally, this is something which has to be taken care of. So shed the Jugar concept. That is very important if you have to, if you want to excel. Another thing is, you know, uh, which I feel is the implementation of uh, technology. Already uh, 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 the speakers before me have already emphasized on the need of, you know, the technology uh, part, AI and machine learning, uh, blockchain, et cetera, et cetera, in supply chain also, which is very much there and it is happening. But having a technology system in a supply chain just for show off or just to, you know, meet the KRAs is not enough. I'll just give you an example. Today's example, I ordered from a global giant some, um, uh, some apparels and uh, they have a tie up with a delivery company for delivery. So everything has, you know, uh, it's going to be visible in the system. And that's, a, that's one of the biggest companies in the world, not just in, in India. I mean, it's one of the, it's supposedly one of the best companies in the world for apparels, online apparel company. Now they have a tie up with an Indian company for deliveries and that company in turn, has a tie up with another forwarding company. So I got a, uh, a tracking number. So everything looks good. You know, you order it, you get a confirmation immediately, auto confirmation. So the customer is anyways, speaking only to the machine, you get a tracking number, everything. What, what is the use of all this tracking number? If your system itself is not updated, you put the tracking number, it will show, yeah, it is going from this destination to this destination. But what is the use of it if at every stage it has not been updated? So somewhere, you know, there will be probably seven, eight people in, in between who will be hand, who has the, you know, uh, responsibility of updating the system. So even if there is a lag, even probably the first person is doing it on time or the last person after delivery is doing it on time. But if the middle people are not doing it in time, customer is not going to be happy. He will actually, you know, I mean, what is the use of the technology then? Just getting a tracking number, just like showing off that we are also system oriented is not enough. So uh, use of technology in true sense to keep the customer satisfaction or the customer delight in mind is to be there. Now, uh, another, another message which I would like to put forth to um, uh, the students is that um, more often, students who come out from business schools and all, they think that uh, supply coming out from business school, you know, they will be probably taking up a leadership role in a supply chain company or in a manufacturing company handling the supply chain. That doesn't happen. Supply chain is a very different kind of profession. So there are people who probably have uh, gotten into supply chain by chance. So that's one way. And there are people who have gotten into supply chain with experience or with knowledge of supply chain. So I would, and supply chain is one profession wherein you have to know the floor level activities. So once you come out of your business school and if you're expecting that you will be getting the corner office and you know, just to manage the show, that will not give you the complete picture or that will not give you, you won't be able to excel or perform in a supply chain organization or in a manufacturing organization with that knowledge. You need to have the floor knowledge. So. My message to all the students, don't wait for an opportunity, which will probably be a kind of a leadership, uh, giving you a leadership role. If you get that, fine, but you still need to understand the ground level realities, the, what is happening at the, you know, uh, with, the, with the labors, with the warehouse, how the warehouse is managed, how the pick, uh, pick sheet is, uh, uh, 
you know, generated, how it has been loaded, how it has been, uh, you know. So uh, all these things have to be known and on the ground for just knowing the process is just not enough. I mean, having experience on the ground is very important. So, uh, so that's my message, of course, of, uh, to uh, the students that uh, who would like to, you know, excel in supply chain. So supply chain is not to be taken for granted. Job to chalo, thik hai, is department mein mil gaya. So I'm getting a, you know, sub, ex, ex, uh, uh, you know, experience in supply chain. You need to understand the supply chain processes. And supply chain is not just about uh, deliveries. Supply chain is not just about warehousing or demand planning. It is farm to fork, the entire process. So there are many multiple things involved in it. So I think this is something which I'm sure, um, uh, you know, uh, in your school you will be learning in various schools wherever, wherever you're attending. You will be learning all these things. So um, uh, also one of the other things which as a uh, you know uh, 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 office bearer of the association, I would like to say, uh, I have been, I mean, uh, Association of Supply Chain Professionals is a very new body in India. But even this body, when it was not there in India, I was very much active with global bodies of supply chain professionals. So what I would like to say here is, as budding professionals, please get also involved with professional bodies because networking is very important for to know for you to know what is happening in the industry is very important. Suddenly going to the industry and not knowing anything what is happening, what are the new trends, what are the things which have been expected, it will be very difficult for you. So please get involved with professional bodies, whichever you feel is good, but then getting associated with the professional body will help you understand what is happening in the industry, the latest trends. Uh, so all these things I would, uh, I mean, this is something which I would like to emphasize. I mean, I've already uh, circulated some uh, information about the association. I think Professor Biswas will, uh, if if it has not been done yet, probably it can be submitted. No, no, yeah, we have submitted. We have circulated okay. those who registered earlier. Fantastic. So uh, if there is any other uh, the query, uh, you can always uh, reach out to me with, uh, I mean, my email address is there with Professor and uh, also in the, e uh, on the website of ASCP. You can always reach out to me. But then uh, my emphasis would be that, you know, see supply chain with the customer in mind, just not, you know, completing your KRAs. So that's my message. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Basu, for uh, explaining that what is expected from modern supply chain. And uh, I'm sure that the participants would have learned uh, many things uh, because they are aspiring to become a professional in this field. Now, it's uh, now my turn to invite on Dias, my student, Mr. Najibul Rahman, whom I taught, and all my faculty colleagues who are present here. They, are all, they must be also feeling proud that we are sharing our screen or stage with our own student uh, who has been working in this domain for last uh, six, seven years. So uh, we are very proud to have you, Najibul, on the stage. It is your college, so you are just with <coughs> the juniors. Uh, so I would like to ask you a very simple question that which comes in the mind of every juniors that how is the life see the professionals which we have here they are quite senior they have seen their uh, part of their life in this professional journey but you are quite young you have been in this industry for last five six years though in today's world five six years is a long time it is not called a short time it is experience wise it is also long but i would like to ask you on behalf of the juniors who are attending this uh, class or session that how is the life as a supply chain manager or supply chain professional immediately passing out of the graduate program or postgraduate program and what are the difficulties you faced and shortly what would be your message to your juniors okay uh, thank you sir uh, first of all good afternoon everyone uh, i would like to thank you uh, uh, Pega ma'am and Professor Sanjeev Vishwa sir and Principal sir for giving me this opportunity. It's my pleasure to be a part of this session. And uh, well, uh, actually, uh, I passed out from CBS Calcutta Business School in 2016. And uh, before, uh, uh, before my uh, 
before doing PGDM, I didn't uh, connected with any organization. I didn't do any job. I was freshers. Then uh, after uh, completing of my PGDM, I joy, uh, then I have started my career. Before uh, telling that, I just uh, want to thank you, uh, Patik sir and Mr. Parijat Upadhyay sir and Mr. Angshuman Nel Basu sir for his valuable speech. I think it will be helpful for me, me actually, because uh, till now I am a learner. I am not any expert on any supply chain or arrows. I am also a learner till now. And thank you, sir, for uh, for your valuable speech. And uh, if I talk my journey from CBS to in this till five years, uh, after completing of one year, when I did my summer internship from Future Group, then uh, I have uh, shown that presentation to Principal Sir Samaldatu Choudhury. That time, Principal was Samaldatu Choudhury, sir. And he and he suggested me that time he Najibul, uh, you just prepare yourself. This company will come after one year for final placement. Okay, so that from that time that after again after one year the company uh, company came to uh, our college and then I got selected for that role. I was joined as Oiros manager in Future Group. My first job was the Oiros manager in Future Group. I was there for two years. And uh, in in these five years, I think uh, I have faced lots of uh, challenges, uh, but it was more exciting, I, I think. Uh, the, in the, when I joined in a future group, that time the main problem which I faced, that is the, all the inbound, outbound operation uh, the future group, in the future group, they are operating through SAP only. But uh, at that time, I have just only the basic idea about SAP. I didn't uh, have any practical idea on SAP. But that time, I have I have to learn how to how to uh, operate all the things, all the inbound outbound outbound operation through SAP only. So I have learned a lot from uh, future group. Then after that, after five years, when I joined recently, I joined in the Flipkart. Uh, it was uh, more exciting for me because uh, the total, total whatever I have learned, the inbound outbound process at, in Future Group, in Reliance, that all are different, totally different in Flipkart because Reliance, Future Group, they are using SAP, but that ERP, which uh, the Flipkart is using, that is totally different. They are not using SAP. So uh, till now, I, it, little bit difficult for me. I'm just, I'm also still now learning that the, all the flow and all, all the processes. And uh, I think, and I just want to tell all my uh, juniors that uh, who are in operation, who, who are doing a specialization in operation, I think uh, you have chosen a right path because in the future, I think it has a lots of scope out there. You can uh, you can search a lot. You can do lots of uh, opportunities. You can uh, search about in the net also. So if you are uh, if you are uh, specializing in the operation, then the just focus just focus on the goal your goal. Key what you actually want to do in the in supply chain management. You just because opportunity is there. You just think positive. You just believe in yourself and just set a goal and just go for it. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, Najibul. Taking clue from his last few lines that have uh, your own goal. It is the path is exciting. A lot of opportunities are there. Although challenges, opportunity never comes without challenge. So whenever there yes, is sir. challenge, there is an opportunity. So taking yes, clue sir. from his words, we would now proceed to uh, the open session for question and answer. Before that. I would request Ashish to play a small uh, video so that uh, people can jot down. Uh, yeah, Sanjeev. Yes. Sanjeev. Yeah, just I would like to add something. If you have uh, one or two minutes for me. Yeah, sir. So that, you know, it's a nice uh, meeting the professionals and uh, thank you and Mr. Kishan Basu for calling me up yesterday. And so nice of you that we met of so many years. Uh, now I heard uh, the all our uh, esteemed guests who have come in here. I'm really, really thankful to 
Kunji for inviting you all and organizing this. And while hearing you all, that another thing that came up to my mind is that what uh, about um, Mr. Uh, Martin Christopher of Cancel University who said that today, in today's world, businesses or companies do not compete, but the competition is between their supply chains. And that's the theme that you had been talking about. And really, it's a very good topic that uh, Sanjeev has come up with, and we deliberated on that. Thank you so much. That's all I had. And we definitely would like to be in touch, all of us, with you all in, uh, in the future. Uh, and uh, bringing you here many times for the benefit of all our students. Thank you so much. Thank you. So thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you, sir. In line with uh, what sir has said, actually, we have a plan to deliver it our courses with more and more uh, sessions taken by the industry professionals so that we can bridge the gap between the actual practice and the academic uh, rigor and academic uh, scrutiny of all those concepts. So uh, today only we have just completed one five day workshop on case writing. Today only it was completed in the morning. So now, uh, before I proceed to question answer session, just a quick refresher. Asis, please play the second video. Otherwise, if you are not ready, then we would straight away go to question answer. If excelling is your essence, then you are welcome to Calcutta Business School. Center of excellence. Centered on excellence. Our trustees had a vision to set up a business school which would cater to the graduate students and also to working managers to fulfill their aspirations. As a result, our emphasis is on curriculum, on students' welfare, on placement, and also on different types of incubation centers to hone the skills of all the students. Business School opens the door to an excellent tomorrow. While selecting a B school, what should you look for? Good curriculum, knowledgeable faculty, excellent infrastructure, good placement, overall personality development? Calcutta Business School has it all. We welcome you all to this beautiful campus of Calcutta Business School. Calcutta Business School is all about a place where dreams are fulfilled. We have a very, very strong value system. As a group, we have 10,000 students and over 500 faculty and staff members. Our curriculum is all about being learner-centric. And each way, you know, the learner moves ahead. There is experiential learning, transformation, the employment rate because there is an industry connect. The campus is just a perfect example. No. I think uh, some technical problem has happened. So anyway, we are already uh, we are, uh, am I audible, sir? Am I audible? Yeah, 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 you're audible. So yeah. I, think, I think we are uh, already crossing the stipulated uh, time which we have framed initially, one and a half hour, like, so as our project management. So I would rather request uh, the, we have received two questions. So I would request the participants uh Mojumdar, please un please mute Mr. Mojumdar, please mute so i would request the participant to one by one who have asked the question to unmute themselves and uh, ask the question directly the first question which i received from insa hussein so insa can you unmute and ask the question to whom you want to ask insa can you unmute yourself Insa, are you there? So whatever he has asked, she has asked that last mile delivery is the heart and soul of any supply chain organization as we understood. It does face certain issues like on-time delivery, which is challenging in uncertain uh, weather condition. 
So what can be some ways to make a strong effective flow in last mile? So I request uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Biswas to answer this question. Mr. Biswas. Yes, uh, so uh, we face it on a very regular basis because in Calcutta it rains and uh, obviously we are a early morning delivery. So uh, we have to work throughout the night. And if it rains at night and obviously there are water loggings uh, everywhere. So there are two aspects to it. One uh, from the customer side, we need to inform the customers beforehand and obviously they understand that there is an issue because we deliver, uh, deliver to them every single day and we deliver very essential items like fresh milk and vegetable and uh, uh, fish and meat. So that one uh, important thing is communication that is on the customer's part. On our part, in terms of uh, supply chain, we have to ensure that our manpower is there on field. They are motivated enough to enter those areas and deliver. And uh, overall, uh, on an overall supply chain basis, for example, what we do is if we increase the number of vans which are applying uh, that day so that we can reach out to more places and uh, more comfortably and ensure that our quality of uh, products are preserved somehow. Right. So uh, another question, uh, two couple of questions I received. One is that obviously it is also <clears throat> a very pertinent question that we are talking up so much of analytics, so much of uh, big data, so much of this technology. So the question is, are we at all capable? Are Indian sub supply chains are capable to adopt such high tech, uh, uh, such kind of complex technology? So this is another question uh, to uh, my question to uh, Professor Upadhyay, are Indian uh, supply chains ready to take up uh, this technology challenge? Okay. Uh, I think that's a very interesting uh, question as well. So uh, thing is that uh, uh, I would like to answer it by raising a question itself. Uh, the question is, to what extent is the organizations ready to imbibe this culture of analytics? Last year, uh, I had a paper in a A-star journal uh, wherein I actually uh, explored this particular issue only that now companies are talking about analytics, big data analytics and predictive analytics and all sorts of analytics that you can talk about, right? That's fine because uh, as you are saying that the companies are not competing, it's not a competition between the companies, it is a competition between the supply chain. So how can I further optimize my supply chain? So when it comes to optimization or basically the bundle goods or basically they're finding out the complementary goods, most effective mode of transportation, the time of delivery, how can I reduce the cost? Everything is fine and your, your uh, analytics will give you the insight. But has the companies invested in their manpower to come to bring them to the level that they are able to imbibe this analytic character? Has that internal capability has been developed? So the thing is that unless and until companies do substantial investment in their own employees so that they get adequately trained and come up to the level wherein they can use these methods to actually deploy them in operations, I don't think companies can get rich benefits out of this. So it's all about basically creating a learning culture wherein this, this analytical know-how has to be imbibed within the employees so that they feel comfortable to use it and thereafter we can reap the benefits. Otherwise, it's just going to be the lip service as of now, what we find in Indian companies at least. And unless and until we actually work upon the, of the obstacles or hurdles that we find on a day-to-day -day basis, like even if it's a one country, you find there's so multiplicity of taxes. You drive down from Ghaziabad to Delhi three times you have to pay taxes. You don't know why. There is a Northern Municipal Corporation of Delhi. There is a Southern Municipal Corporation of Delhi. Then there is when you enter Gurgaon, you pay another taxes. You wonder whether this is a one country or you are entering some other country. So when these challenges remain, right, it's very difficult to make some model because model goes on some assumptions, right? So none of this will play 
unless and until the ground realities have been taken care of. So that's my. Story. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, Sanjay, just uh, for one minute. I, sir, I do have two take, questions. Taking you from what uh, Dr. Pata has said, see what you said about those uh, taxes, toll taxes. You know, we had, uh, quite some time back we had octroyers, which have been now been taken away fully. But in place of that, what has come is what you are saying about those uh, taxes. And in those times, I remember the offer in some states was applicable, in some states it was not applicable. And, and, and it was quite a uh, challenge, you know, for those people crossing the states, you know, and they have to pay offer at various points of municipality areas and uh, to go through. I mean, definitely that, that's a big challenge so that we have to really look into it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have two more questions. One is a very interesting question, which I, I have found that <clears throat> Jubo is asking is ASCP is planning to help uh, the budding managers by providing some sort of support in near future. So he wants to uh, get, uh, know from uh, Mr. Basu that uh, as a student or as a budding manager, what kind of support he can get from ASCP. See, ASCP, uh, um, just to address the student, ASCP is an association, and it is an association of people like you and me. And of course, we have uh, 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 the student community, we have people from the academia, from the industry, from uh, consultants, uh, and some from the government. So it's like that, uh, uh, you know, so ASCP is a platform which you can use to network, to gain knowledge. Of course, we have our own publications and all which we uh, share. You can ASCP uh, Chronicle. Chronicle. So you can you can also put uh, send your articles, get some visibility about what you are doing. So we can provide a platform for you to get visibility through networking, through your art, through your uh, thought provoking articles or any other thing. So uh, we are not a kind of a uh, uh, and, uh, Kind of a shop. It's not a shop that we are providing any some kind of you know uh, 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 jobs or anything. We definitely you know participate in forums like these. We conduct our uh, you know annual programs. We conduct our uh, workshops uh, in various places, talking about supply chain. Yes. What? Uh, just to answer the student's question. Also, what he can also do is you know which other institutes have done and. Uh, 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 is like, for example, a lot of business schools have their own chapters of student bodies of ASCP. So uh, wherein they uh, discuss, uh, you know, uh, the latest trends in supply chain, they, uh, uh, you know, invite speakers from outside from the industry to talk about supply chain, what is happening. They con uh, conduct case study competitions. They uh, do all these kind of, uh, you know, uh, article competition. So this is something if uh, if he would like to uh, you know uh, join any such chapter which is in the vicinity of the uh, I mean, maybe the eastern region chapter if he's in this uh, uh, if, if he's in the eastern region or if he wants to uh, join a particular school's uh, chapter he can do so and uh, get involved. So um, I mean it's all about like what Gandhiji said. It's not that you know what. Uh, uh, the country is giving it to, giving to you what you are giving to the country so it's like that so you know it's all about the person's involvement in the association and you know creating that buzz creating that visibility so we are all i mean i'm also a volunteer so he can be a volunteer he can participate and uh, uh, so what as ASCP as an association we can certainly support in terms of the branding we can support in terms of getting some a high level speaker or a particular speaker from a particular uh, you know on a subject so those are the things that we can do. And uh, like I said, publications are there, are, uh, conferences are there. These are things you can participate. Thank you, Mr. Basu. I think Professor uh, Upadhyay has something to say. And before he says something, uh, sir, I have a last question for you. Could you please explain the bully effect in beef? Some of our students asked. OK, sure. Now, uh, just adding to what Mr. Basu was saying, since uh, I am also a member of ASCP, uh, the value that you can find while joining uh, ASCP is that uh, uh, it is a it is a gathering of industry academia experts uh, who are passionate about supply chain. So as we have been mentioning that uh, 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 Najimul was saying that uh, don't simply take it that you have to pass another paper, right? 
So if you are passionate about supply chain and if you are passionate about how companies like Big Basket can add more value, how Amazon can do, can look into some problem. So you can definitely be a part of us. You will get guidance from the people who have uh, very, very scholarly uh, members in our forum, as well as uh, industry captains in the supply chain domain. You will get the insight and what your direct takeaway will be that you will get to work with some projects wherein the guidance will come. These people, people like this will come as a mentor. So please visit our website, acp.co.in, and you will get to see who are the people who are associated with it and the mentoring that you can possibly get. And I, I, I fully believe that if you can follow their guidelines and if you can get the necessary inputs, guidance from these kind of people, right, you will be able to come up with a very good project which will help you a lot in your career progression as well. Right, so that's a great learning. Like we have the head of supply chain of Kimberly Clark, head of supply chain from Tata Steel, head of supply chain from Britannia, head of supply chain from Patanjali, right? If these kind of people who are active members were giving you a day-to-day -day guidance on how you can do a more meaningful project, I think what else you can look for when you are a student? I'm right? sure. So, absolutely, sir. Absolutely, yeah. sir. What yeah. are you yeah. Absolutely. So, so sec, coming to the second question, that bull wave effect that you talked about, I think... Uh, uh, I would request them if you can give me maybe in some other day a half an hour time frame so I can course, explain in course. details, right? Of course, we were so, thinking that, uh, sir, that uh, whenever these physical restrictions are lifted, we would well, love to invite all of you uh, <laughs> no, that, to campus, but still such time we would love to listen to you again and again. No, I that's fine. That's fine. Uh, what I'm saying is that uh, you need to uh, see the way uh, I go about it is that I generally take it with a case, okay? Uh, so let's say that it all happened with Pampers. I believe all of you are aware of Pampers yeah. and all, right? So uh, the point that I was doing, the dilemma that I was talking about when talk, uh, when uh, deliberating in a uh, Asian Paints class, that why are they facing fluctuations? Why, if they are doing a proper forecasting, be it with SAP or Oracle Financials or whatever, then why is this that in some times there is a stock out and in some cases there is an inventory. So if you have taken the data from the last mile, then if you aggregate it, it should have been the case that the number of units or num quantity that you produce is equal to the consumption. In that case, it is a win-win situation for all the members in the supply chain. So you will iron out the issues of inventory. Again, inventory leads to your losses. You will iron out bull wave because some of the other, some of the chains in the bull, in your supply chain is getting affected. So coming to what is bull wave effect is that let's again take the example of uh, Asian paints. As I said, during Diwali, at least in North India, what I have seen is that they have at least 90% houses they would like to go for painting their houses right before Diwali. So you will not get these painters. They are painters in high demand. So they will like to give for painting. And let's say the hardware dealers as well the paint shop also, they also know it very well that the, there's going to be a spike during Diwali season because people are going to go, go for this painting. So what happens is, let's say one particular color, blue. Okay. Last year, they might have sold for in a particular month, they have, might have sold 500 liters. So given that they found, okay, fine, uh, last time I had sold 450, this time uh, I've sold 500. So maybe going by this, I might be selling something close to 600. What is the basis of 600? Is there a mathematical, can you actually derive that figure? It is just coming from intuition. So what if, what if that there is a movie wherein Shah Rukh Khan or maybe Rithik Roshan are staying in a home which has been painted pink. So for that particular year, you will find that there's a huge demand for the pink color. So there is no taker for the blue color. So what happens to the blue? The demand dashes, right? So you won't find demand. So there is no mathematical background to it. So as a result, what happens is a lot of inventory gets built up in the chain. And any inventory buildup or any stock out situation is not a good sign for any healthy supply chain scenario. 
so i think i can uh, this all like and talk about in a very limited time span if you can allow me some po uh, some point yeah, of, of time course. maybe it's, it will be our honor to uh, in invite 30 you. minutes also i can take a detailed session just only on the bull wave effect oh, we can take we can take your consent and time uh, availability we would invite you sir in fact we would invite uh, all of you mr basu uh, mr viswas because it is a kind of webinar uh, one and half hour it's a kind of awareness kind of thing in our college calcutta business school we have formed a center of excellence where we on a regular basis every week we organize such kind of webinar on different domains and different topics like we organized webinar on digital marketing we organized webinar on power of business analytics today we are organizing webinar on supply chain competing with supply chain we have a plan to come out with women empowerment then climate change and business perspective then your family business and social entrepreneurship all these topics are in pipeline and we are organized this is called a weekly workshop kind of webinar just to appraise the students or the newcomers or participants what is uh, what is going on in the market and what are the things are emerging concepts that are coming up so but neither nonetheless these concepts are having immense value and it requires a at length discussion to uh, give some idea about this topic but i we would be definitely inviting you uh, not uh, if possible physically otherwise virtually because we all are connected these days so it's my turn to just quickly summarize what we have uh, discussed uh, during this session we have very fortunate we are fortunate to have all our esteemed panelists uh, for such an important topic uh, first our first panelist uh, mr pratik biswas he touched upon the value of supply chain in the context of business management or organization and he was totally talked in the context of uh, e-commerce and to like make to make to understand about the importance of supply chain and he also focused on few points like last mile delivery then delivery speed return cost and earning so this these are the few important Uh, aspects that he uh, elaborated and he emphasized on the importance of service the sec our second esteemed panelist uh, professor parijit dupadhyay he talked about a very uh, crisp manner in a very crisp manner what are the uh, the arduous task for supply chain managers like the how to manage the disruption particularly he mentioned which i i am completely agreeable that this pandemic has Uh, opened up a curtain in front of our eyes uh, that many issues are being uh, on the surface itself so in that context we talked about disruption then demand uncertainty that how does demand fluctuates and despite all efforts and despite all sincere forecasting highly sophisticated and complex models people fail to forecast properly and they end up with either stock out or stock piling up and then he also talked about very uh, aptly the challenges of transportation in this context he mentioned about the importance of cold chain and still there are so many hope so many scope for improvement in such kind of supply chain which is known as a perishable supply chain and uh, also the disaster relief or humanitarian supply chain as a matter of fact so he also uh, uh, he also emphasized on this legal part and agility is one of the key of supply chain management our third esteemed panelist uh, mr neel basu uh, mr anshuman neel basu he started with a very interesting coinage of uh, this supply chain requirement that is just in case supply chain it has to be a just in case not the just in time he emphasized on the responsibility of the supply chain managers and the partners across the entire uh, activities and he called it as a responsible supply chain we have heard of we are heard of you know, efficient supply chain we have heard of uh, responsive supply chain we have heard of precious matrix calgic matrix but it is something which we are looking at the responsible supply chain and rightly said as we are moving to our society 5.0 it is more and more becoming pertinent to think of responsible supply chain and he also talked about the requirement for customer delight and one should be very much uh, 
anticipating in nature to understand that what could be my requirement future or two days after. And that reminds me the famous example of uh, Steve Jobs, who told once that it is not important to understand what your customer is requiring now. It is important to ignite their inner, inner requirement, which perhaps they probably do not know. So if you can do that, you can get immediately connected with your customer and you can uh, gain uh, their uh, confidence in you. And he also, uh, have, uh, he also, uh, he also advised not to uh, bring about this Jugaad culture uh, in case of uh, supply chain management as you are, if you want to become responsible, you have to be disciplined first. And last but not the least, uh, he also mentioned about the implementation because it's a country where we plan much but implementation is not done according to the, the amount of planning which we do. And I'm just happy to now uh, uh, listen to one of my ex-students' uh, uh, experience after passing out from college. And he actually said the right closing note. In fact, I'm just doing my ornamental duty. He has said the right closing note that be passionate, be ready, be agile, always try to learn, be humble, and always accept the challenge, stay on and stay ahead. So he just mentioned in a beautiful way. So with these, uh, this was- uh, 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 Mr. Vasu has something to say. I, 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 I said that, let me finish, sir. So uh, this was the uh, summary of this entire session. And I see that Mr. Vasu wants to say something. So before the Insha has, Insha gives the formal vote of thanks, uh, uh, Mr. Basu, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Sanjeev. And I think, uh, you know, you have beautifully summarized uh, uh, every speaker's uh, uh, main points. And uh, uh, I mean, I was also very surprised that, you know, you captured all the main elements because I was somehow thinking probably you will miss one or two important points which I wanted to mention. For example, the Jugar point, which you which you already covered. So I, I really want to emphasize that this is something which needs to be shed in supply chain. I mean, this is not something to be proud of in supply chain. That's one. And secondly, which I wanted to mention is, which you already summarized, is uh, the customer delight part in supply chain, which is the most important thing. So uh, like I said, there is a Japanese term called omotonashi, mm. which is, I, I think you can, you all can, and the students can uh, Google about it. It's all about, uh, you know, uh, anticipating the customer's needs. So basically, uh, you know, it's just not uh, for any supply chain budding professional, it is just not ticking the box or completing the KRA. So one has to be passionate about this profession. Then only it will, they can excel in this profession and then only this supply chain in India will excel. Otherwise, just ticking in the box, completing the KRA will not lead us anywhere. So Omotonashi is very important. So that needs to be embedded in our lives, you know, in each and every activity, and we can excel. So this is my firm belief, and this is what, what I wanted thank, to. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, now I, uh, it's my pleasure to invite uh, our uh, present student, Miss um, Insa Hussain, to who has just done his internship uh, in Amazon, and uh, to say a formal vote of thanks. It's immense pleasure to hear all of you. Insa, you. Uh, you a bit louder louder yeah yeah good evening everyone still your voice louder pretty louder. low yeah. still your voice is pretty low maybe something you have to do with your device yeah. otherwise yeah, uh, speak with a, a loud voice you have to make it it's pretty low low your voice is pretty low now, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, better. It's given me an immense, immense pleasure to hear you all. Being in the operations field and hearing from uh, some experienced people and taking the knowledge from all of you. We as students are very grateful to Sri Sutrayatan Foundation and CBS for holding such webinars and providing us with all the experiences and practical knowledge about supply chain. Students like us, who, who we are pursuing operations in an MBA, it's very knowledgeable 
to and very helpful for us in our future endeavors to know the shortcomings, loopholes, and the prospects in operations. A big credit goes to Professor Sandeep sir for arranging such a webinar, and we look forward to meet you all in person in near future. Thank you for giving your immense time to us and having such a webinar. It was a great knowledge. Thank you. Have a great day. It's my uh, my from my side. It is my fortune that I have this opportunity to interact with you, because personally I. Uh, came back, I know uh, Parijat sir for a long time, but without actually interacting with him. So, and also I met Mr. Basu in the last uh, second ASCP conference where we presented one paper there. And, uh, and Mr. Biswas, it is very nice to interact with you. And we will actually indeed uh, invite all of you and giving you trouble to address our student as a uh, part of or as not a part of these uh, different courses that which we teach, because we want that multiple perspectives can build a successful professional. It is not that one dimensional uh, knowledge transfer that can make a good professional unless and until you inculcate the first pers different perspectives, different uh, proceedings that are happening in the outside of uh, this campus or outside of the textbook or outside of the classroom. So with this good note and hoping that uh, we would be uh, getting your uh, support as we have got for this week workshop and we would be listening to you again and again. So I thank you all for giving your precious time for yeah. educating us. And uh, also it is already 6.45. I'm sorry that I have overrun 24 minutes. I, I promised you to be finished at 6.30, but eventually the interesting discussion went up to 6.54 and I hope all of us who have attended this workshop never felt any uh, disconnected with this workshop because it was so interesting so with this <clears throat> let me uh, as a formally close down this workshop i yeah, thank let all me, the participants uh, Sanjeev, Sanjeev, let me thank uh, from my side all the, uh, the dignitaries that you have uh, been can i you can you can yeah actually you close down the session sir no 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 you you are you're the person who did everything I just would like to thank all of you because there are many things that I also learned. I was though I was in the industry, whatever we learned, but it's, uh, your knowledge is really added up to what I have been knowing. So thank you for that. And as uh, Sanjeev uh, said, I really th thank you to Sanjeev for inviting you and again inviting me again and again. And he said that he'll be there. Uh, he would uh, definitely like to have you here virtually or uh, physically. Thank you so much. All the best. God bless. Thank you. So we are now closing down. Stay safe, stay well, and get stay connected with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.